Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so happy that you stopped by today. How are you guys doing? Well, guess what we're going to talk about today? That's right, prehistoric cave paintings. This is a topic that to me is better than paranormal because this is the history of human beings and why did they paint on the caves? Well, we're going to dive into that in today's mystery. Um, so the first cave that we're looking at here is called Megura Cave. And Megura Cave is one of the largest caves in Bulgaria. It's located in the northwest part of the country. The cave walls are decorated by prehistoric cave paintings dating back eight to 4,000 years ago. More than 700 drawings have been discovered on the cave walls. They are painted with bat guano, which is bat excrement, ew, and represent hunting and dancing people as well as large varieties of animals. Now, look at the people there. They have like robes on, right? Or unless, unless they're chunky people, it looks like they have, some of them have dresses on and um, they could be carrying things. I mean, this is fascinating. And they drew like stick people, which is where my art is, so I can kind of relate to them. Now, I've got Druid um, tarot out here, but I also have... Um, some other decks here to try to communicate and we're going to tap in we're going to do a cave painting and then we're going to tap into the cards and we're going to go to another cave painting we're going to go back and forth so that the cards know clearly who i'm talking about so i want to dive into who were the people what kind of people um, put this these paintings in the magura cave in, in bulgaria so i'm going to switch the camera back we're going to look at the druid craft cards and we're going to ask what kind of people put put the drawings on there what kind of people were they? What kind of life did they live? Um, seven of Cups. Oh, so they lived a simple life and they dressed simply. This is just like th clothes wrapped around you. And they lived close to the water, but they also lived in the, look at the cave, the cave, the mountainous with the cave. You know, that's where they um, had their refuge. And this is the Seven of Cups, because so it tells me they were kind of like dreamy people. Like they were fascinated with the reflections they saw in water. Um, did these people, were these people intelligent in the way that, did they have the, um, did they have language skills? Did, you know, were they able to communicate with other people? I mean, I guess I'm thinking, you know, way back, this was only, you know, eight to 4,000 years ago. Obviously, there must have been communication. Wow, they threw spears. Um, they were pretty loners, though. They were, there's, these are not group cards. So they were, they kind of went off on their own, um, but they were hunters. Because see the spears? See the spears? Let's see in this cave if there's any spears headed toward the animals. It's hard to tell in this um, drawing but can you imagine that it survived on the on the wall that long ago so they they had the capability to hunt and throw spears and make their weapons um, what else do we need to know about these people what type of people they were in this cave oh so they did have like a tribal headsman like a head leader they had a tribal leader king of pentacles so that's interesting and they were structured and organized. That's what that tells me. They had some structure and organization to the to their um, society. Now, the next cave we're going to visit is Sueva de las Monos. And that is Cave of the Hands. And this is a cave that is isolated in the Patagonian landscape of southern Argentina. It depicts its name, Cave of Hands, from the stenciled outlines of human hands. But there's so many depictions of guana guanacos, rios, and other animals and hunting scenes. But most of the hands are the left hands, which suggests that the painters held a spraying pipe with their right hand and then painted over their hand. And so their left hand was down and they held some type of spraying pipe. Now, listen to this. This cave is thought to be, these paintings, between 13,950 or 9,500 years ago. Why? Why did they want their hands all over the caves? So we're going to go to the cards again. We're going to um, start with Druid Craft, but then I'm going to also choose some others. 
So this is this is even older, thirteen um, thousand years ago. What were they? Why did these people paint their hands? Why did they feel like they had to paint their hands on the caves? Five of cups, and we have five fingers on the hands. Look at he's got a hand there. I should get my pointer. He's actually got one hand exposed. They had a great deal of suffering back then. Oh, I get it. This is weird. You want to hear what I'm getting? And you guys can tell me what you think. I'm getting that it, it kept the memory of their loved ones alive because they often had only a few survive. Like out of a large family or whatever, there would only be a few survive. And this kept the memory. When, when they painted their hands on the cave, it kept the memory of their loved ones. They could go back to the cave and they could look at their loved ones' hands. I wonder if they've determined that these are adult hands or there's children hands or there's some of each. Um, I wonder if they've looked into that. Um, I'm going to use the um, a different tarot deck and I'm going to ask... Uh, what was what what was the average experience of the people in this um, Sueva de la Manos cave? What was their average experience or their average life experience like? And uh, see, they had a hierarchy too. This is the Emperor card. They had a hierarchy too. So they, they lived in harmony with each other. These particular people, I feel like, were peaceful. I'm going to go to the Light Seers. Um, that was the Elemental Tarot. I'm going to go to the Light Seers and ask, um, tell us some things about the people and, you know, about what type of people they were like, what their life was like. Yeah, lighthearted and happy. They were a happy people, and they were... They were, you know, this is interesting because they had some kind of a, of a belief in the spirit world. And they also, look at the symbol. Look at the symbol on his shirt. Let's go back. Oh, no, it's just the cave of hands. Well, we, let's pay attention if this symbol shows up anywhere. That's an interesting symbol. It's a stick with some lines going through it. But they were a happy people. Um, wh whatever happened to them? Were they like wiped out from some natural disaster? Whatever happened to them? St um, this is where she's squeezing something. She's squeezing the cup. They were squeezed out. I think another race came in and possibly annihilated them. It feels like they, you know, she was squeezing that. It feels like they were squeezed out. Uh, the next cave we have, and I hope I can pronounce this, is... Bimbetka, Bimbetka, and it's located in central India, and it contains over 600 rock shelters decorated with prehistoric cave paintings, executed mainly in red and white with occasional use of green and yellow, and the paintings depict the lives and times of the people who lived in the caves. Animals such as bison, tigers, lions, crocodiles have been abundantly depicted in some of the caves. Um, the oldest paintings are considered 12,000 years old. Now, to me, does it, or is it just me, does it look like people riding those animals? And it looks like those animals have manes. So does this look like they rode horses or rode whatever type of zebras or whatever animal lived then? It looks like they were riding the animals. And then this one with a pattern around it, he's on... Looks like he's on the back of a horse and there's some pattern around him, which I find to be interesting. So this is going to be really interesting to pull cards and see what was going on with this particular tribe. So Bim, Bimbetka, what was going on with that tribe during that time? Obviously, they were horse people. Four of Pentacles. The key. He's opening up a, a key to secrets. Wonder what that's about. He's op he's opening up 
like a treasure. He's oh, he's looking for a treasure. The high priest. Oh, look, they were like animal people. Because see the bullhorns? Oh, and there's some weird hand signal there. This was definitely a close-knit group. They were a close-knit group. We have a lot of hierarchy cards here in this prehistoric art. A flood drowned them out. Okay, I was just about to ask how did how did they how did their race end? And they had a flood come out and wipe out everything. It wiped out their habitat, and they did not survive. They're under the water. Okay, um, what what was their connection um, to the horses? Was it just that they simply hunted on horses, or or you know because this is so interesting. Oh, there they are on horses. You can't make up this stuff. That's why I read the tarot because you, there's never a day that you're not, you know, in awe of the tarot cards. I ask about horses and here's somebody riding horses. It looks like they didn't wear too many clothes, but they were happy people too. They just, they enjoyed the companionship of horses. That is fascinating. Wow. Let's move on to Sarah de Capivara. Um... This one, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, Serra de Capivara, I think it's pronounced. This is a nat national park in northeast Brazil. It's home to numerous rock shelters that are decorated with cave paintings. The scenes of rituals and hunting, trees and animals and capivaras. Some scientists believe that the oldest cave paintings in the park were created 25,000 years ago. Now, this could be disputed. However, um, it would conflict with the accepted date of human settlement in the Americas. That's weird. Now, look at that stick. Those two people are, like, carrying a stick together. I mean, where are they going and what is that thing? Um, and, of course, they have some animals in here. This is really ancient. This is going to be interesting to talk to these people. So... These people are Sarah, Sarah da Capavara. Let's see what these people, uh, what kind of people were these? I'm using the Druid tarot deck, which is one of my faves. Oh my God, they, these people made a difference in the world. Like they made a huge impact. Um, they were nudists, obviously. There's no clothes here. But I wonder how they could make an impact in the world or they were just that part. Oh, they migrated. These were migratory people. Six of Wands. So these were travelers. Now look. Look at, they traveled in small groups. They traveled in small groups. So they were migration people. So whenever the wet season came, they would migrate to get water. They migrated to get water. So they were very in tuned. Well, back then, you didn't survive if you didn't have water. So you had to migrate to where the water was. And wouldn't it be weird? They just went to a river and drank. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't even do that today. You would pass away if you did that. We've, we have made our water so toxic. But can you imagine living on the earth where you just go to a river and you just take a glass and drink it? Um, that's weird. Oh my God, there's two of those stick things. There's people, two sets of people carrying like those stick things. Wonder what they're doing. Is that a dance? Are they celebrating? Is that a weapon? What was this? And they really felt the desire to put their life on a cave. That is so fascinating. The women, oh, here's the stick they pulled. Oh, so that was a, a branch. That was a tree branch. And it was a, it was a sacred symbol for the hunt. They got a hunt, that's a hunting bird. So that was a, a tree branch and it was a sacred uh, dance for successful hunting. Gotcha. Okay. I get it. That's fascinating. And 
what what do we have to know about those people? What do we have to know about them? Five of Cups, they suffered greatly. It's a lot of suffering. Wow. It's interesting that we get the Five of Cups from different uh, decks, isn't it? Next cave, Chave. Chave. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The Chave is a cave in southern France that contains some of the earliest known prehistoric cave paintings in the world. It's based on radiocarbon dating. The oldest paintings may be 32,000 years old. It was discovered in 1994 by Jean-Marie Chauvet and his team of specialists. Now, these paintings contain images such as bison or ibex, mammoth. Can you imagine living with mammoths? Horses, lions, bears, rhinos, and lions. Okay, advanced techniques such as the use of perspective is clearly demonstrated in the cave painting with horses. This was an advanced art technique that 32,000 years ago, look at the shading. And can you imagine that this survived 32,000 years? And look at the, the rhino in there. Looks like a rhino. And the horses, they had short manes. They have very short manes. And thick necks, very thick necks. I mean, this is incredible. I can't wait to talk to these people. I mean, th I mean these people were amazing artists 32,000 years ago. I just, I just am blown away. I mean, our history is way more interesting than what I think the books tell us. All right, so let's tap into these people um, and find out what was going on in their lives. What was going on in their lives in southern France 32,000 years ago? Oh, they were in love. They really were into procreation and creating uh, species. I mean, they were in, this is two of cups. This mean, meant that there was, um, it's almost like they, they were really close. They had couples, you know, they had couples that got together. 32,000 years ago, they had a lot of death. Oh my. They had a lot of death. Oh, they had a connection to the spirit of the death. They had like rituals to honor the spirits of the dead. See the ritual, this ritual. And then look at, they were artists. Look what's on the wall. Look at the faces. They were like really tribally people. Rough, rugged tribal snake. They had to be careful of snakes or some kind of serpent. Look at this. This gives us a hint of how tribally they were. Oh my God. So they had a lot of death. That's why they had to procreate. That's why it was important for them to come together to create their species because something could come along and wipe out almost all of them. Five of swords. There's more suffering. Wow, these people really suffered. They had um, very... Um, prehistoric tools 32,000 years ago. I mean, they, it feels like they carved sharp things out of whatever they could make sharp things out of, sticks or whatever they could make sharp things. And a lot of them suffered. I mean, there was a lot of suffering going on with them. Doesn't this just depict the prehistoric people just beautifully? Like the hunter would sit there with his sharp tools and sometimes wait for days trying to get food to eat. And they were very connected to the trees, like the trees provided a refuge for them. That is just incredible. I mean, it's really, Druid, the Druid Tarot really, it, they're huge cards, but they really do predict predict. Um, or give you a perspective of the life then. I'm going to use light seers and say, does any one of those tribal people right now, are they in spirit to where they could communicate with someone now? I wonder if they know how this world has evolved. 
Page of Pentacles. They were dancers. Oh, they did ritualistic dancers. So they danced for the weather. This is like some ceremonial dance for the weather to come. Because you know what? If they didn't have good weather, they didn't have food. They couldn't eat. They would die if the weather didn't cooperate. So they they had these ceremonial dances. And that is a page of pentacles. That's somebody coming through that might communicate. I don't know. Maybe there's a language barrier. I don't know. Um, oh, this is interesting. Ten of pentacles. So their genetics are still alive today. Holy crap. Their genetics got carried through to modern days. Fascinating. That is fascinating. Are you guys enjoying this? Um, this is the, the kakadu. I don't know how else I should pronounce that. Kakadu rock paintings. Now, this is located, these are located in the Northern Territory of Australia and in a national park. And it contains one of the greatest concentrations of Aboriginal art sites in Australia. There's 5,000 art sites that have been discovered. I mean, these people were artists. Why did they want to draw all over the walls? Um, the Aboriginal painting are est paintings are estimated to range from 20,000 to present. Some of them are only 1,500 years old. Um, the site at Ubir has some of the finest examples of x-ray art. The aboriginals not only painted the outside, but painted the bones and the internal organs of animals. Can you imagine that? Check that out. X-ray cave paintings that could be like 20,000 years old. And they obviously wore large hair or large headdresses. Um, and look at that frog or whatever that is that's got the bones inside. Maybe that's even a human. Uh, it's got the spinal cord. Weird. This is going to be an interesting group to communicate with. And these are the aboriginals. They, I mean, these people knew how to walk and find the water. Think about what it took to survive back then. Doesn't It just is amazing how tough these people were. I can't wait to pull some cards on these guys. What were these, what were these aboriginals like? What were these aboriginals like? You know this is going to be interesting. Well, the same card came up. They were travelers too. And they traveled looking for water. That's what I said. That's what I was just saying. And if they, if they lived in these desert or drought kind of places... Um, Ten of Wands, really hard, really difficult life they had. Um, but they did wear a path, like they followed a common path, like a migratory path. So they would migrate, and they carried their, their spears and their hunting tools with them. They ate a lot of stuff from the trees or berries. They harvested from the trees and the berries. I mean, when you think about it, this planet provides... Everything you need to survive is here. It's just, I mean, even whether you're a cave person or whether you're modern day, it doesn't matter. The earth provided for you. So these people were very in tune to berries, you know, and fruit. Like, I almost feel like they were fruit type people or berry eaters. Their art is very colorful. And they obviously dressed, they, you know, it looks like they're in robes or something. So it looks like they had some clothing back then. Look at here, pregnancy was honored. Like the pregnant woman was treated like she was a goddess because any, if, if she delivered a healthy baby, that meant that they continued, that they're, that they continued. So they, they honored the pregnant woman. Uh, so let's go with Lightseers and see what else we need to know about this amazing group of Aboriginals. Oh my God, they were they were definitely connected to the spirit world. This is the the high priestess. They were so in tuned. Spirit world was always talking to them. They were they were completely one hundred percent always connected to their higher intuition and to their, um, and they traveled the land with everything that they needed, which was bare essentials. They packed very light and they migrated. 
So there again, we have the we have the migration of the species. Boy, they lived a very simple life. Oh, this is interesting. It's a hood, a hooded being, which is oh death and rebirth. Oh, they believed in reincarnation. On some level, they believed that when they had a death ritual and believed that rebirth, that you come back. Now, and you might not always come back as a person because they believed, I think, that you could come back as a tree. You could come back as anything. This is fascinating. They had death and birth rituals. That's fascinating. They're very in touch with, their, with the spirit world. And they, they're very loving people. Very loving people. I feel like they carved bowls. Like they like the pottery. They were pottery people. And look at the energy coming up from the pottery. And they were definitely a loving people. Very loving people. Now we've gotten that from more than one. The fact that they were very loving uh, people. Sometimes we don't... Um, history doesn't portray them like this. Now... Look at this. I mean, wouldn't you think this would be modern? This is Altamira Cave. And this was discovered in the late 19th century. The Altamira Cave in northern Spain was the first cave in which prehistoric paintings were discovered. The paintings were of such astounding quality that the science society doubted their authenticity and even accused its discoverer, Marcelina Sanz de Sotalua, of forgery. Many people did not believe that prehistoric man had the intellectual capacity to produce any kind of artistic expression and it wasn't until 1902 when the parents when the paintings were acknowledged as genuine the charcoal and okra images of horses bison and handprints of the Altamira cave were among the best preserved ca cave paintings in the entire world they put an eye on there they did the shading of the horn they did hair they did the legs with the muscles this is incredible this is incredible and this is prehistoric you guys prehistoric I mean they I wish they would have done one uh, paintings of themselves and in great detail so we could have seen their eyes and their face I mean they they when they drew the people it seemed like they glossed over them or they didn't draw nearly the details that they did when they drew their animals um which is fascinating that, you know, they chose to draw the, you know, stick people type of things when they drew people. So this one, let's pull the cards. This is our final cave. Let's go ahead and pull some cards. What kind of people were artists in the prehistoric time to put forth artwork like that? I mean, that's pretty incredible for prehistoric cave art. Ooh, so they're no longer with us anymore, but the water means the Ace of Swords is they were highly intelligent. They, um, their race disappeared. You know, there had to have been huge uh, earth changes back then that could have just wiped out. I mean, they could have literally wiped everybody out, right? Uh, Princess of Cups means they were very artistic and they were more modern than our, than pre... Okay, so this is what the cards are saying. When we call prehistoric, we always think of cavemen who grunt and they carry a club. That's what we've been taught in history. This is that these were highly evolved people who actually looked like human beings, not cavemen. They looked like human beings and they were extremely artistic and they thrived on their art. Here's the death. They experienced a lot of death. Um, but they also look at the details here. They were they really paid attention to the details of life and how they lived it. They planted trees. They knew oh, so they knew about gardening. Look at the fields. They knew about gardening. They they actually gardened rather than going and eating all the hunt the berries and stuff. They look at the rows. They actually knew how to garden and grow trees amazing I think history we just have it wrong I think we have it wrong 
Uh, of course, they had battles to fight. When people would come and invade their land, they had battles to fight. So they were battlers. Let's do the light seers and see what the light seers um, says about them. How, how evolved were these people? How evolved were they um, that, you know, prehistoric times? Five of pentacles, we get a lot of suffering. Um, so their traits have been passed on. Their traits were passed on to their children, but they did have they did have a lot of suffering. The Five of Pentacles is definitely a suffering card, but this is highly evolved in planets. They knew the planets. To me, this is like the planets and the rotation of planets. And this is also, um, wow, they had birds that would literally attack them. Wonder what prehistoric birds... I, I wonder if they ever painted the prehistoric birds that would go after them. Could you imagine having this big bird come and attack you when you're out there? Um, yeah, they were pretty highly evolved, and they were they were also connected to a spiritual teaching, um, some type of like the gods. And look at these birds! He's like, oh my god, there's more birds. These they keep wanting to tell me the birds, the birds. I wonder if they painted the birds. I should go look and see if they painted birds because it looks like they were haunted by birds back then. Weird. But it looks like they were very evolved people. The world. Yeah, they were evolved. Ooh, and, and they even knew about sacred geometry and how sacred geometry works. Like the they could make their structures... Um, withstand wind in that because they understand the laws of geometry. Holy smack. I think history is not what we think it is. These people were highly evolved. That's the world card. They were worldly people. They had an attitude. Look at they were drummers. They liked to drum and they watched the wildlife. They could have been hunters too with the Knight of Wands. They were very connected to the earth and, and drumming and music and sound. Wow, this has been interesting. I want to thank all of you for joining me on this um, unusual uh, journey through the prehistoric caves. I just really did not expect uh, the cards to give the amount of information that was there. And maybe you picked up on some things as we're going through these and so feel free to share if you see like a sacred symbol in here or you see something that they're doing that sparked your interest. This one's interesting. Um, I mean, this has really been an interesting journey for me. And I want to thank you for being on my channel and we'll see you on the next video.